This week on Wolverine Sports Magazine, hockey hits its stride heading into MSU week part two. Wrestling scores an impressive upset. Lacrosse and softball seasons get underway and a perfect 10 from gymnastics. See it all coming up next. Wolverine Sports Magazine is presented by Meyer. Hi everybody, welcome to Wolverine Sports Magazine. We have a huge hockey weekend to talk about, but first we're going to chat football. New head coach Sharon Moore continues to formulate his coaching staff for his first season on the job. Second year quarterbacks coach Kirk Campbell will add offensive coordinator to his duties. Campbell had a great relationship with J.J. McCarthy and served as OC during last year's opener against East Carolina. Grant Newsom keeps working his way up the coaching tree. The former tight ends coach will take over for more as the offensive line coach. Newsom spent two seasons as an O-line grad assistant before getting his first full-time gig. And special teams analyst J.B. Brown has been elevated to special teams coordinator. And he comes highly endorsed by former special teams boss Jay Harbaugh, who now holds the same role with the Seattle Seahawks. Now to the ice. Hockey coming off its first Big Ten series sweep of the season. The Wolverines took care of business in Columbus last weekend. Great story here. Tyler Duke, who transferred to Michigan from OSU in the offseason, scored the first goal Friday night as Michigan beat the Buckeyes 4-2. Freshman Garrett Schiffsky lit the lamp twice, and fellow freshman Nick Moldenhauer added the game winner to get the weekend rolling. Saturday, sophomore Josh Ernesty lit the lamp twice, leading the Maize and Blue to a 4-1 victory. Ethan Edwards and Rutger McGrory also tallied for the Wolverines. Big Ten third star of the week, Jake Barczewski, was outstanding between the pipes, making 29 saves to clinch the sweep. Uh, it was hard. Like, they're, they defend the net front well. I felt like we had to earn it, but it was huge to get the job done. Now to this weekend, Michigan, Michigan State. And if we learned anything from the first two games a couple of weeks ago, you can expect the unexpected. The two teams will clash Friday night in Ann Arbor at Yost Arena and then Saturday in downtown Detroit at the Duel in the D. I think this weekend is huge for us. Um, you know, Michigan State, I think being ranked a little ahead of us uh, gives a little more motivation. And obviously, we don't like them and they don't like us. So um, it's always fun to get up. And then obviously, playing at uh, Little Caesar should be fun. But I think we're just focused on Friday and just getting the task at hand. But yeah, it's going to be an uh, intense game. I think everyone's going to be on edge a little bit. But, you know, we know what we need to do. We've been playing good hockey. So um, it should be a really good weekend. It's not going to be easy. We know they're a good team. and. You know, we like where we're at right now. They like where they're at. So a uh, huge weekend coming in. But if we just stick to the plan and stay the course, I think, uh, you know, we're going to, I like our chances. They're a top 10 team and the Big Ten's extremely deep. So every game's tough, but uh, we know what we need to do against them or more for ourselves to, to have success. It's just comes down to execution. I know you have to focus on Friday, but can you speak to the bigger picture of the opportunity to play at LCA Saturday in, in a trophy game and all the kind of hoopla that goes with that. Yeah, no, it's going to be a blast. It's it's a late game for sure. Um, should be sold out. Unbelievable atmosphere. Obviously, last year, you know, Husey scoring with uh, one second left in overtime. Just a lot of good memories. Uh, it should be a blast. The rivalry is uh, pretty pretty real, and uh, you know, being a first year here, you kind of you get that right away. So um, there's a lot of buzz this week in our room, and you know, I'm sure it's the same for them. Um, it's going to be great downtown Detroit, uh, Little Caesars Arena. I mean, there's nothing better than that, right? So just going to enjoy it and, uh, you know, play the best we can. Wolverine Sports Magazine is presented by Meyer and brought to you in part by Al Rose Steel, by Abso Pure Water, and by Grand Traverse Resort. Men's Hoops made a splash at its annual pool party Wednesday night against number 11 Wisconsin. Doug McDaniel sparked the Wolverines from the jump. The sophomore was a problem for the Badgers D. He scored 11 points in the first half. Michigan led 37-33 at the break. Second half, Wisconsin makes the run you knew they would. The Badgers go ahead on a Chucky Hepburn and one. It was 46-44. But Michigan caught fire with a 19-6 stretch, and they did it with a balanced attack, putting four players in double figures. 
Terrace Reed Jr. scored 12. Will Cheddar bringing it off the bench. His swirling three gave Michigan a nine point edge with 5.45 to go, Will popped in 11. Terrence Williams II had an even 10, including this clutch jumper to beat the shot clock. And McDaniel led the way with 16. Michigan salts the game away and turns back one of the Big Ten's best clubs, 72-68. We've seen and we've showed that we can put together a great first half, but to you know, come out and put together a great second half as well is you know, what we needed and can show that we can do it. But now it's just about you know, being consistent and coming out um, and doing it again. What was the difference tonight in holding on to a halftime lead? I'll say the energy and I felt like we were tired of it, man. Like second half, we know like we, did, we usually don't come out as strong, so we knew we had, to, we had to change something. So coach called an early timeout. That's what I noticed. And to gather, talk to each other, hey, we got, we got to bring energy. So that's what we did. We brought the energy second half. Feels great. Uh, it was a very nice gift that the fellas said uh, after the game uh, in the locker room. You know, they, they basically said, you know, hey, you know, this is a birthday gift for you. And uh, it, it's nice to, to know that. You know, our guys with a smile on their face, you know, get a chance to sleep on their pillow and uh, hopefully the food tastes a lot better tonight than it did, you know, some other nights. Um, and at the same time, uh, be able to wake up with a smile on their face because, you know, it, it's been a lot, it's been a grind, but we will continue to grind. Michigan hits the road Saturday for a night game at Nebraska. The Cornhuskers are much improved this year, a near lock for the NCAA tourney, and a 14-1 record in Lincoln this year. The women ended a two-game losing streak in style Saturday on the road against Penn State. Down by two points late in the half, Michigan scored the final six points of the second quarter to take the lead at the intermission. The Wolverines scored 11 of the first 13 points of the third quarter to take the lead for good. Layla Felia led all scorers with 23. She was one of five Wolverines who hit double digits. Lauren Hansen scored 15. Alyssa Brett and Kyra Evans each posted a dozen, while Jordan Hobbs added 10 points, 80 to 75, the final from State College. I need to find ways to make you more competitive and have more fight than you ever thought imaginable. And tonight, I saw a glimpse of that. I really, really, really saw that. And that should make you proud. And that should make you come back and hungry and want that more and more and more and more and more. Jump to Tuesday night at Chrysler versus Nebraska. Cam Williams dominated play in the paint early, scoring three straight buckets and giving Michigan a seven point lead. She finished with 14 points. The Wolverines led by as many as nine, but saw it dwindle to one at the bathroom break. There were seven lead changes in the third quarter and the back and forth battle continued into the fourth. Hobbs led Michigan with 16, Hanson finished with 11, and Felia had 10 points for the home team. Nebraska grabbed the lead with just under seven minutes to play and never gave it up on their way to a season sweep, 65-59 the final. Michigan only has three home games left. The next one on the schedule, Saturday, 2 o'clock against Rutgers. It's the annual pink game, and the first 1,000 fans in attendance will receive a souvenir pink scarf to take home. The 12th-ranked wrestling Wolverines won the first five matches last Friday night and seven overall to knock off second-ranked Iowa 24-11 in their final home match of the season. Freshman Sergio Lemley stole the show on senior night when he knocked off the nation's top-ranked 141-pounder, much to the delight of the large crowd, including head football coach Sharon Moore. Lemley, who's ranked 19th, broke the bout open with a pair of six-point moves. He used a standing cradle for a takedown and four more back points in the final 15 seconds to score an impressive 14-2 major decision. Since the beginning of the season, I, I felt like I was a top one guy, and I knew that I had to come out here and beat the top one guy. And I need to beat the top two guy, the top three guy, all the way down. I feel like I'm one of the best in, in, at the 141 weight class, and I'm just super grateful at, right now. Third ranked Shane Griffith registered a 12 to one major decision at 174, and sixth ranked heavyweight Lucas Davison was a major decision winner as well. 
wrapping up the dual team victory over the Hawkeyes. Just a tremendous effort in those first five weights to get it started uh, on fire. Upper weights did a great job following suit. Um, just, you know, overall, just really the things we've been working on, the areas we're covering, uh, you know, they're showing we're getting better week by week. Guys really came and fought, wrestled hard tonight. Michigan fans, that one's for you. Women's gymnastics hosted Michigan State Sunday, and there were some great performances in front of more than 11,000 fans. Grad student Sierra Brooks just kept doing her thing, a winner on the uneven bars and the all-around competition for the Wolverines. Senior Carly Ballman won the balance beam title with a career best score of 9.950. And Gabby Wilson was simply perfection. The graduate student scored a 10 on the floor exercise. But for the first time since 1990, the Spartans beat the Wolverines in Ann Arbor. Michigan's now on the road for four weeks, beginning this weekend at Minnesota. The fifth ranked women's tennis team beat Virginia 5-2 Saturday at the Varsity Tennis Center. Sophomore Lily Jones won the final five games of her third set at the number six single spot, sealing the win over the 11th ranked Cavaliers. Tuesday, it was a top 10 battle against number eight Florida. The Maize and Blue rallied in two matches to take the doubles point and then went on to take down the Gators 4-1. Kari Miller, Jaden Brown, and Gala Mesaharitu with the singles wins, a great team victory for head coach Ronnie Bernstein and the Wolverines. The men's team began a three-match homestand Sunday, taking on Washington. The 11th ranked Wolverines won the doubles point and three singles matches to beat the Huskies 4-1. Jacob Bickerstaff, Will Cooksey, and Nicholas Steiglider were winners in doubles and singles play. Michigan hosts Notre Dame Friday at 5 o'clock. Wolverine Sports Magazine is brought to you in part by Al Rose Steel, by Abso Pure Water, and by Grand Traverse Resort. Lacrosse season begins this week. The 12th ranked women are in Florida to take on Jacksonville Saturday at noon. Michigan's coming off its second consecutive trip to the second round of the NCAA tourney. The home opener is February 17th against number four, Denver. The men are eighth or 11th, depending on which poll you follow. They're in Charlottesville to open the season against third ranked Virginia, also Saturday at noon before the home opener on the 17th. Michigan's coming off a Big Ten tournament title, as well as the program's first NCAA tourney appearance and first NCAA win. I think we're all pretty excited. I think when you spend, you know, six months of just beating each other up, the opportunity to play another color on the road, uh, obviously a traditional powerhouse brings a lot of excitement to it. But at the same time, we're mainly concerned about just playing Michigan lacrosse. That's really all we talk about. We talk about how do we go down there and execute our systems, our stuff, and be who we are. Michigan softball christens the new season this weekend at the USF Rawlings Tournament in Tampa, Florida. The Wolverines will play five games in 48 hours beginning Friday at 10 a.m. against Illinois State. You're so eager to play. You're so ready to go out there. I think that's how I'm feeling for sure, and I think that's how everyone else is. Um, we've been in Usti for a while, so we're definitely ready to get out um, on the road, on, on the dirt, and start playing again. I'm excited. This group's ready to go. We've been working super hard since the fall, and I'm just ready to see us flourish on the field. Got a lot of new faces with our freshmen coming in, and I'm just really excited to see the progress that we've made from last season to this season. Those freshmen, there are five of them. Head coach Bonnie Thole says Ella Stevenson, Janice Conway, and Aaron Hain are leading the charge for early playing time. We have to bring them along and not bombard them with so much information. The intensity of the game is going to be present, and they're going to feel that. And um, I think it's going to be up to our upperclassmen to help model the behaviors they want to see in the rest of their teammates. I think each and every one of them bring a different skill set to the to the table that we're going to need and we're going to need all of them so i'm super excited to see them flourish and get out and experience college in all there are 13 returning letter winners kiki is one of three captains joined by pitchers lauren Durkowski and jess lebeau to have two of our captains have the ball in their hands every single play of the game 
it's critical. And they were voted leaders because of their ability to have great and positive influence on the team and their teammates recognize that. It's an honor. Um, I love being able to be someone that people can kind of lean on, depend on, and also just step into that role um, being a junior and getting to work with Kiki and Jess so closely. I think I rely a lot on my energy. I'm a really loud person. I love cheering. I love to hype people up. So even when I'm feeling down, I just always turn to energy and try to scream and yell, get myself up, but also to get my teammates up. Bonnie says mistakes will be made early, but she likes the makeup of this team and says it has already shown its resilience. We have more speed than we've had over the past few years. Um, so we have some excitement happening on the base pass. We get those players on, we're able to go station to station, and then we're gonna count on people in the middle of our order, like Kiki Thole and Lily Valamont and Maddie Erickson to really clean the bases. It's amazing to see that there's so many people on the team that can play so many different positions and the different types of bats we have on this team. I'm just, it's crazy, and I'm just so happy that they're on my team because we can throw out so many lineups that can get the job done. Spring is certainly springing here on campus. Thank you so much for watching this week. We'll see you next time on Wolverine Sports Magazine.